Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, I just got my injectors back from Darkside Developments in the UK. Darkside Developments sells the largest nozzle for the ALH that I could find anywhere on the internet. So, I decided to go with them. And then, in addition to buying the nozzles from them, I went ahead and had them install them because prior to sending out my injectors, I was actually getting really bad hammering on my number three injector like ting, 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 kind of a thing. So I figured just easier for 200 bucks to send them out and have them professionally redone somewhere where they do these all the time. So here they are, they're back. We're gonna install them today. And then hopefully, big old fingers crossed here, but hopefully for the first time, the ALH will actually make some horsepower today after we put these huge injectors on it. Off we go. Um, and so just kind of as a reminder to everyone watching uh, that if you're used to my 1.6 content which is also what I am used to <laughs> uh, then you will, will recall oh I needed that <laughs> fuck All right, now we're going to torque the injectors down. This is 15 foot-pounds. And now, there tends to be some problems seating things, so my solution is this. If you don't get your injectors seated in the crush washers, they'll leak, and then you'll continue to tighten them Dirty hammer. So, a couple taps. To make sure things are seated. And then we go back and torque again. couple things. I was low on brake fluid because it was leaking. Just replaced that O-ring. I just replaced this fitting because it was leaking oil, so i got to keep an eye on that. We have all our injectors installed. The lines are torqued to the pump, but not to the injectors. So, we are about to bleed the lines. Ugh. I find it's much easier to bleed if you fully depress the gas pedal, it'll bleed a lot faster than if you don't. Well, that didn't take too long, did it? And you forget to put the return line on. The next place I'm going with this thing, if it all works okay today, is the car wash. <laughs> now, the predicament becomes how much do injectors change how much fuel is getting to the car? Because I have the pump adjusted for the other injectors, and now if I start it, is it going to go to the moon? I don't know. So, I haven't actually changed the pump setting. Fuel screw is exactly the same, so this is an experiment. We're going to find out if you change your injectors. Jesus, FedEx, <laughs> if you change your injectors, how much you need to fiddle with your pump to make it to make it go. My theory is they're much bigger injectors, so hypothetically, it might idle the same, but it also might idle higher because we're getting more fuel. Okay. Here goes nothing.
Okay, so it idles exactly the same. Fascinating. So, no change. No change in idle, which I guess makes sense. Your pump is ultimately what's deciding how much fuel is injected at idle and small injectors are completely capable of managing that amount of fuel. So it makes sense that when you put bigger injectors on, nothing really changes. Okay, however, it was not running terribly happy right there and I would tend to blame that on it being cold, but also injection timing, as I recall, pretty sure I slowed this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance the timing back to where it was, and we'll see if that makes it better. I just put timing back to where it used to be when it was more advanced. I still couldn't tell you what that is numerically. so much better and there's no more knocking sound that's gone oh my how excellent okay that is way better and it feels like it actually wants to make power now instead of being super lethargic. So awesome, awesome, awesome. For one, new injectors totally solved my pinging knocking sound. So on newer engines, make sure you check your injectors. If you're hearing a knocking sound, it might not be the bottom end. And for another thing, totally fix my responsiveness issue. It feels in the garage even way better. So, I'm low on diesel fuel, and I need gas. <laughs> so, I think we're gonna take a test drive here in a second, and we'll cover both those things. Reminder too, we're still breaking this thing in. We got 20 miles on it. 20 miles on the recently rebuilt motor. So, for initial settings, I got 20 pounds of boost, 20 pounds of drive pressure. Some people have this theory that you're supposed to baby an engine when you remake it, and uh, I don't believe in that. You know, you never see it, no one's ever out there in a, in a whatever, 800, 1,000 cubic inch blown V8 in a dragster, putting it around, breaking it in. They run that shit down the strip once and rebuild it. So, not that the point is to do it once. <laughs> 
I mean, what seats, what seats piston rings is cylinder pressure. And uh, if you... If you baby it, you don't get any cylinder pressure. Oh, wow, way better. So much better already. So yeah, I mean, it's running great. Uh, coolant temps have barely moved. Oil pressure is looking steady. EGTs aren't even crazy. I am a little disappointed with the top end right now, which maybe we just need even more timing advance. Uh, and my exhaust manifold is doing that scary burning that shit again. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, the turbo lag is, is negligible. It's a lot better than the 1.6 was. However, I'd say so far, in terms of power, via my Cheeks Dyno, uh, I'd say we're making the same or less as the 1.6. So, we'll see, what, we'll see what all the hype is about. That was much better. Um, I feel like it's a lot closer to what I want it to be than where it was before I put injectors on it. Because that's awesome. I mean, night and day difference. Also, like, 
I don't, I feel like people in forums and things like really hash about injector size for the TDI. And I just went from stock, which is probably the smallest possible nozzle to the largest possible nozzle you could buy. And personally, I feel like I lost zero drivability. Uh, and now I have as much tuning potential as possible. I won't be limited by nozzles anymore. Uh, you know, no complaints about it's idle or how it comes on power or any of that. I mean, we have loads of fuel. What'll be sweet, I think I'm just gonna give it a few more runs at 20 PSI and then I'll go back up to 30. Uh, and at 30 PSI, then we should be making more use of all that fuel because we'll have more air to match, which will be great. You know, at low idle, it has ever so slight of a miss, which maybe could be the new injectors. Um, and I mean, the easy way of fixing that is just to raise my idle slightly. <laughs> Pretty easy. Uh, and the other thing I notice is it has a lot of power when it comes on. And then top end, not so much, which I think partially is just an ALH thing. Like the ALH is a very torquey motor and it makes most of its power down low. So, I don't know if there's exactly anything to do about that, but I will definitely be trying to play with ignition timing or injection timing more, because I have a feeling if I go a bit more advanced than I'm even at now, chances are that top end will get a bit better, which would be sweet. Because right now it it really <laughs> pulls through the bottom of each gear and then kind of levels off, which that might just be the beast we're working with. And I know a lot of people made comments about, oh, when is the O2O gonna blow up? Honestly, I don't, I don't think we're really gonna have a gearbox problem, if I had to guess. Uh, I'm personally more concerned about the gear ring itself as opposed to the gearbox's strength. You know, if the ALH has this narrow power band that's low in its RPM range, and we have these short gears from the O2O, we're not gonna get a lot out of each gear. So, but at any rate, I have one more small oil leak it looks like I need to fix. And uh, other than that, you know, a teeny bit of like wiring cleanup Oh, and it shakes. It shakes pretty bad at like 75, which is no good because at the racetrack we easily hit 100. So I need to figure out what that's about. Felt like this corner looks like it's good on air, so I'm not sure why it's vibrating like that. But <laughs> that's what's cracking. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, yeah, I guess bottom line, if you're building an ALH and you want lots of power just get really big injectors don't don't be a wuss <laughs> and thank you to uh dark side developments they didn't sponsor a lick of this injectors these injectors or this video but uh clearly they do a good job so worth giving them a little thank you next time <laughs>